Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to our webinar, Unleashing Your Leadership Potential. This is Professor Cherry and Garcia Durante, and this is Everyday Learner PH. Welcome to our webinar, and this time it will be a series of three sessions, which we will um, complete all tonight. So for you to be able to get your post-webinar evaluation link, I need you to listen until the end of the of each session. So you will along the way as you listen, you will get a passcode that will amount to your password for you to be able to answer the quiz. Okay. So I hope that you are uh, with us and are excited to learn. A little bit of something about your speaker for this afternoon. So I graduated from St. Louis University, a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, my master's from UP Manila, and I am currently connected with the University of Perpetual Health, Dr. Jose G. Tamayo Medical University as an assistant professor. So I am the head and co-founder of Above and Beyond Classrooms, which uh, has the goal of helping students reach their maximum potential by providing quality uh, trainings and seminars like this one. So we've partnered with other universities and other schools to provide training for them. And usually our trainings are free, so uh, we just give them out to help and give back to the academic community. Okay, so... So here are the different webinars that we did in the past. If you're interested to still get a hold of them, they are on replay on Everyday Learner uh, PH uh, on our YouTube channel. So you can just go there. These are all for teachers and students. So if you're a student and you want to learn about uh, th these different concepts, then you can just go there and learn with us. Now, the past webinars, we had uh, the most recent last week, we had Languages of Apology. So this, this is a workshop on how to apologize. So probably you're trying to figure out why are we giving out workshops like this. If you watch the webinar, I know that you will learn a good deal because many of our subscribers told us that they learned a lot from that webinar. So you can just go there and, you know, um, uh, watch that for yourself and also subscribe to our channel. Next is uh, another webinar that we did in the past is understanding temperament. So if you want to know about your temperaments, uh, what are temperaments anyway, and these are the things that uh, piques your interest or your curiosity, then you can just go to uh, Everyday Learner and watch that uh, video. Another, we have the Art of Teaching. This is, again, a free webinar. Uh, we provide e-certificates for this. So if you watch that video, so you will be able to get um, an e-certificate for the Art of Teaching. Now, the Art of Teaching is meant for teachers, but also for students who um, have the desire to teach. So if you're teaching even uh, a small group or even in Sunday school, so this can ignite your passion to teach. Okay, so please join us in this webinar. Okay, so for this topic, uh, unleashing your leadership potential. So this is some this is something that is for um, actually this is a leadership seminar for those who are non-leaders or who are just beginning on their le leadership track. But if you're already a leader, then it's also good for you to refresh on some of the concepts that we're providing here. Okay, so it says here, everyone talks about it. Few understand it. Most people desire to cultivate it, but few actually do. And that is what we call as leadership. So if you are a person who is often chosen to be the leader of whatever group you belong to, then that is a plus side for you because people see you and they see a leader. However, for this, uh, for some people, um, it's very difficult for them to become leaders or to stand up and take on the leadership role. Now, in this webinar, we, we will try to 
you know, uh, give you a little bit of concepts on leadership. And I hope that you will go through the three uh, sessions that we'll be giving you tonight. And I hope that you will be richly blessed with wisdom as you go through through it with us. Okay, so if you're new on our channel, please do subscribe and give give us a thumbs up if you like this webinar. So we are we have this goal of hitting about one thousand likes for this webinar. So give us a thumbs up. Okay, so let's begin with an activity. So as I've told you, this will be a workshop. So a workshop entails that you will also do something with us. So it's good if you don't have a pen and pencil yet uh, in a notebook with you. I'm going to give you time. Just grab one because we'll have some activities along the way. And I also hope that you were able to download our um, our tests on leadership assessment. So I'm not sure how many of you have downloaded that. But if you haven't downloaded it, please go to the link that you see here and download that link as well. Uh, it's a test and it's easy. You can just answer that and be honest about it so that you know uh, what track are you in in terms of leadership right now. Okay, so for our first activity on a piece of paper, write one word that describes a great leader. What is that one word that describes a great leader? So go ahead and write that down. Now, for you to participate, on this, you may want to take a screenshot of that or you can just type it on the live chat. What is that one word that describes a great leader? Speaking of our chats, if you're familiar with super chats and super stickers um, it, and you want to support Everyday Learner as a channel, you can just buy and uh, a sticker and uh, so, so that you can, you know, support us. And that will be greatly appreciated. So if you want to support Everyday Learner for us to be able to do more videos like this one. Okay. So the super chat is in the live chat box. Okay. So what are the words that you've written there in, in the live chat? Okay. So just write down what one word describes a great leader. Okay. So with that in mind, these are the, the characteristics that you think of when you speak of a great leader. The next question that I have is, why do many people not develop as leaders? If leadership is that important and many people, especially those that hire you, looks into leadership skills, why are some people not developed as leaders? Does this ha have something to do with a wrong, uh, a wrong assumption? So probably. So let's look at that. What are the reasons why many people do not develop as leaders? Number one, I'm not a born leader, so I cannot lead misconception. This misconception talks about um, people thinking that Leaders are born, okay? Not, and if that's the case, then we will not have what we call as leadership skills because skills are things that you can hone, things that you can develop. So if leadership is a skill, then, and it's also true that some are actually born with a tendency to lead based on their temperaments or their personalities. It's also true that leadership can be taught, can be gained. The skill for being a leader can be gained with experience, with honing, with knowledge. And this is that's why this one is a misconception. Another, another reason why people do not develop as leaders is this. A position or title will automatically make me a leader. For some people, just because they're given a position or a title, they think then I'm all already a leader because I am the let's say I'm the president. Now I was elected as president of this organization, or rather I was voted as the leader of this group, or I'm the president of this class. Therefore, I am a leader. But um, 
a Swedish class leadership, you will find out that a position makes a leader not. Which means it doesn't necessarily mean that you have that position. Now, automatically, people will recognize you as their leader. Here you will see that um, it's not automatic because leadership is something that has to be gained just like respect. Not because you are placed in that position that you already gained the respect of your colleagues or your classmates. For example, you are elected as the president because you were, let's say, valedictorian from your last school and they thought that you are really uh, uh, very well-versed or very articulate. It doesn't necessarily translate that your classmates will automatically follow you. You have to prove yourself that you actually deserve that position. And for later on, you will find out that maybe it's a little bit difficult to be placed in a position wherein you are not yet ready with your leadership skills because, well, you will later find out that the leaders tend to get blamed. <laughs> Once something happened uh, in the organization or in the class, you know, it's always the president. Who's your president? Who's your leader? Who's your, uh, I don't know, who's your dean? Who's your principal? And doesn't necessarily mean that you're the principal or you're the head of teachers that, or the supervisor for that matter, that you're the best person for that position. Sometimes you're given that position for other reasons. And because of that, you need to prove that you are actually the person for the job. So that's the reason why some do not develop as leaders. They look into the position and the title and they think they are already leaders. So they don't think that they need to develop their leadership skills. So that's the reason why they don't actually do it. The third reason is this one. I don't develop my leadership skills because I'm waiting until I get a position to start developing as a leader. Now, this one is reactive. What we're teaching is for you to be proactive, which means that you don't wait for the position to find itself in your lap and then, okay, that's the time that I'm going to, you know, research on how to become a leader. So that's not how it works. So that's why. Even before the leadership role comes into, into you or the opportunity was given, is given to you, you have to prepare yourself for that leadership uh, role. Because if, you know, if you're already there, then it might be too late for you. Because uh, once there, you didn't know. For example, for those who, who are here right now, and maybe you had an experience that you are given a title or a leadership role wherein you're not prepared. What happened to you? What happened, for example, with you and your colleagues? So you have to fend for yourself alone without the skills or tools that you need. So that will be a very big problem. So you have to be proactive even before the leadership opportunity comes knocking on your door. You have to have the skills that you need to run whatever organization that you're running. Okay? So that's the third reason. Now, the next question that comes into your mind probably is, okay, ma'am, I'm convinced. I want to actually develop myself as a leader. How can I do it? How can I become a leader? And if that's a question in your, in your mind, we will now go to our first lesson. This is lesson one, influence. Now, if you find here the password, because we will show it along this video, somewhere in this video, it will be shown without warning okay the pass the first passcode or the password now um please do not place it on the live chat or comment it on the video because people will no longer watch the video and just get the passcode so that they can get the certificates uh, that's not what we want um for me as a learner the certificates are just proof that you've learned something, but these are just empty pages of paper. If you did not really, you know, go through the webinar and, you know, grasp what you can grasp from the lessons that are provided. So, yes, you have a lot of papers to say that you did a lot of, you know, you, you watched a lot of webinars, but unless you go through them and learned something from them then those papers doesn't mean 
you know, they don't mean anything. So I hope that you please do not, um, what do you call that? Please do not give a chance for people to fool themselves by giving out the passcodes on the live chat or on the comment section because they will just get it. Some will just get it and just go and ask for the certificates or the links, you know, and, you know, they will not be able to actually get what we're trying to give to them through these webinars. Okay, so let's go with your lesson one. So here you will uh, have three lessons and it will go uh, after the this video ends, the next session will begin. So uh, you can just, you know, stay tuned on Everyday Learner. Okay, so I hope that you registered for this for this webinar as well. So the first and most important, I believe, thing when it comes to leadership is influence. So before we go, let's have some guess the influencer game. Now we're not gonna give out prizes for this uh, yet. Okay, so maybe uh, soon we will be able to, you know, um, give off some prizes. But for now. Uh, this is just a game for us who are live here on this webinar. Can you guess the influencer? Okay. First one, this one, this guy here. You know his picture. It's all over the net. Okay, so you're correct by if you said Albert Einstein. Let's have another one. What about this one? He is a great influencer considering everything that he was able to do so you will manage to learn a little bit about influence when we talk about different types of influencers i'm not saying he's a great influencer meaning that he's a good influencer so you can use your influence either way you can use it for good things influence people in a good way or influence people in a bad way so if you know this guy then you know that he used his um, ability to influence people in the worst way possible. So you have Adolf Hitler. Another, this one, is a social media influencer model. Yes, she is Kylie Jenner. Kylie Jenner. So if you know her, this shot, as I was told, uh, that was uh, taken and with the Vogue label on it, uh, cost about... A million dollars if i'm not mistaken okay so even more so she's an influencer what about this one you know him from his inventions and paintings leonardo da vinci of course for our filipino viewers he's also an influencer of course you have president rodrigo duterte and this one he's an influencer a okay, very important uh, person your, his name is Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela. This one, again, for the Gen Zers here, Generation Z, Generation Alpha, you know who she is. She's Ariana Grande. Okay, so these are your different influencers. When we talk about influence, it says, as James C. Georges said, leadership is the ability to obtain followers. And it's funny that um, I've read in one uh, one book, it says there that if, if you think you're leading and when you look back, no one is following, you are not leading. You are just walking. Because leadership is the ability to actually obtain people who will follow you. And that's the problem that we have nowadays is that not... Uh, it seems that it's quite easy for people to follow you, right? Especially in twi on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook. It's easy. It's just with one click. It's like people are following you. It's so easy. However, can you consider them really as followers? Okay. So when we talk about leadership, it's the ability to obtain followers. Let's talk about some insights about influence before we continue. First is that everyone influences someone. 
if you are listening to this webinar, watching this webinar, and you're a human being, for sure you have your own circle of influence. It doesn't matter if that's so small. Like, for example, it's just your family. You're able to influence your family. Or even you're able to influence your sibling. You're able to influence a friend or two. The, the truth is that you have someone whom you can influence. And leadership is honed from influence. We don't always know who or how much we influence. For us here at Everyday Learner, we are so amazed by the people who are watching the webinar and are giving us feedback of how it, it actually made an impact in their lives or how relevant it was uh, on what is going on with them. We don't know that it will amount to that many ripple effect of influence. However, because we don't know who is looking, especially now in the in the generation of webcams and that everything gets recorded, you don't know who is looking. You don't know who uh, is being influenced by your action. If you're here and you're a parent, you are influencing your children. If you are a parent who you know who's undisciplined, for example, you're imp influencing your your children to be undisciplined as well. If you're a parent who's easily angry, look at your children. Are they also easily angry, just like you are? So you are you are you know you are influencing a lot of people, and maybe you don't know how that impacts their lives, and it can impact them positively or negatively. The best investment in tomorrow is to develop your influence today. Before, when I was uh, looking at YouTube and um, looking at uh, some people who are doing, you know, crazy stuff. There is so much craziness here in YouTube. Just type whatever uh, crazy thing that people are doing and then you will find it there. And they are just willing to go through you know, painful things just to get influence, just to gain subscribers. So um, they have this thinking that I have to invest for my, to, for my future by getting, you know, investing on influence today. And, you know, you will be shocked that many people are subscribing to this craziness. And um some content here on YouTube, which are actually good, which are actually great, are not being seen um, by people because they are subscribed to, to the craziness. Okay, So I don't know, but that's how it works. So if you want to have an influence and, you know, a great um, future when it comes to leadership, you have to build your influence now. Look at people that are looking to you your children, your colleagues, then build your influence from there. It may be starting off small, but when you are able to you know, show them what you stand for, then they will buy into your leadership, okay? So another activity that we have, as I've told you, we have a leadership assessment test. So it's a self-assessment test. I hope that you have downloaded it from the link that you can see below. But if you have not yet downloaded that, please, I, I appeal to you, please do so. Download that on the link, on the description that is uh, written down and um, take the test so that you will, uh, you know, Go through this knowing uh, your level of leadership as of the moment, okay? So I'm going to take uh, give you some time to do that, to go and download. If you're watching this as a replay, then you can pause the video and look for the assessment test and take it first. However, if you are with us on this live video, then um, I hope that you're able to take the test already. Okay, so let's proceed. So if you're done taking the test, let us now look into the results. Okay, so here are your results. If you got 90 to 100, you're a great leader. Right now, you should be mentoring other good leaders. For 80 to 89, you're a good leader and you must keep growing and mentoring others. 
for 70 to 79, you're an emerging leader and you, so, you should focus on growth and begin mentoring others. 60 to 69, you're bursting with potential. An excellent person to be developed. So this webinar is really for you. Yay. And if you got below 60, you need growth. And exactly why we're doing this Unleashing Your Leadership Potential webinar. Okay, let's continue. Now, when uh, John Maxwell talked about in his book, Five Levels of Leadership. And the first level, level is known as your position. So here, people follow you because they have to. So you will see the progression. And our goal is to be able, if we assess ourself, ourselves that we are on the first level, so our goal is to be able to go to the second, third, fourth, and until the fifth level of leadership. The second level is known as your permission. Here, people follow you because they want to. So the first one, they have to, but now they already want to. On third level is your production. People follow you because of what you have done for the organization, which means that what you've done for them, the reason why they are following you, ascribing to you, is because of what you can do, okay? On the fourth is people development. They follow you because of what you have done for them personally. So the, the third level is for the organization. The fourth level is for them personally. And the fifth one, which is the highest level, the pinnacle, people follow you because of who you are and what you represent, which means that it's now about yourself, your brand, your values. And because of the social media age, we know that we establish our brands right away when we become public figures, when we have uh, social media accounts. So that tells people who you are and what you stand for. And uh, that's one of the reasons why people will follow you. That's the fifth level of leadership. If you're able to attain that level, then it means that, you know, you are good with each of the other levels. So um, it's a process for you to, uh, to reach the highest point, which is your pinnacle. Okay, let's talk about this different levels one by one, starting with position. Now... This is the most basic entry level of any leadership. So once you enter uh, a, a new institution, most of the time you are here on this most basic entry level of leadership position. Position represents leadership before a leader has developed any real influence with the people being led. So this is just your entry point. The position that is given to you is your entry point for you to really establish your leadership. So it's possible that you are you're not yet developed or you have not yet developed leadership um, relationship with other people in the in the institution and yet you already have the position. Position is a good place to start leadership. However, it's a terrible place to stay. So if you have entered that, uh, you know, that institution for, let's say, you know, um, last three years or five years, and yet you're still there, people are just following you because they have to, then you have to hone your leadership skills because uh, this is a bad place to stay in terms of the leadership ladder uh, because, you're, you know, people are just mandated to do the things. And they will do, let me tell you, this is the truth. If you're new to, uh, in, to an institution, you have not yet established your brand, you have not established your cap capabilities, people do not, you know, have that uh, huge respect for you yet, then uh, it's possible that they will only do the bare minimum uh, when it comes to your instructions to them, okay? So you have to hold this and not stop in this level. Um, another thing that we have uh, to look at when we talk about position or level one is that positional leaders look for security based on title more than talent. So if you're here, then your first, you know, first reason why you're here is because of the title that was provided. and when this happens, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have the talent to back it up, 
So it's a scary place to be, but it's an entry point. It's like your foot on the door, okay? So you have to hone this. Positional leaders rely on their leader's influence instead of their own. Now, have you ever had that that person placed by somebody else over you? Let's say, for example, um, like a, a superior will say, okay, so the leader for this project is this person. And you personally know that that person is not that good when it comes to leadership or when it comes to the project that you're doing. So you will just follow that person because your superior asks you to. You'll just respect that person. But technically, you don't have that, um, you know, that high regard for this this leader because he was just placed there, you know? So he's like just the... Uh, He's just getting off uh, from the from another person's or from your superior's influence over you. Okay, so you need to have your own influence. Thirdly, positional leaders can't get people to follow them beyond their defined authority. As I've told you, if you're in this level of positioning, posi- uh, in this level of leadership, you will see other people just following you doing their bare minimum they will not go out of their way to follow you for more than what you're asking of them if it will not give them what they need for example you're a teacher and you just entered your class and you don't know this uh the students they're so new to you so it's possible that they will just you know respect you or follow you based on what you instruct them uh, that is associated with their learning or with their subject. But if it goes beyond that, they might not, you know, they may opt not to follow what you're saying. For example, you're you're telling them, okay, class, I want you to, you know, uh, when you go home, uh, uh, just, you know, don't just uh, watch TV. Uh, maybe you can, you know, do, some, do the dishes. And this is yeah, like beyond the scope of your teaching uh, curriculum. So, Maybe if you're in this level of leadership, your students will not follow you because you have not yet established a relationship with them. Okay? So that is position. Leadership is getting people to work for you when they are not obliged or obligated. That is from Fred Smith. So if you're a real leader, people will work for you even though it's beyond uh, what is paid for the or paid them or even though it's beyond what grades you can give them if people are still following you then it means that you're no longer in the first level of leadership the second level of leadership is called permission and here people follow you because they want to out of out of their desire to actually follow you okay let's look at uh at this stage Permission is characterized by good relationships. And you probably see this even with people without the official title. Some people in an organization, they don't have the, 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 the title that is necessary, and yet they have the influence. They are leaders in their own right. The agenda on this level is not pecking order. It's people connection. So, which means that... Um, when we talk about uh, pecking order, it, it is it is a note from chickens, right? So chickens they do the pecking, right? So it says that the the lower you are, uh, the more be the more the higher or alpha chickens peck on you, or you know you know what pecking is, you know. So that is what they do to you. The lower you are. However, here, it's not about the possession. It's more about the connection to people. And that is what the second level is talking about, that beyond the possession, you have to make connections with the people that are following you. You need to build lasting relationships. It says here, people who are unwilling or unable to build solid lasting relationships soon discover that they are also unable to sustain lasting effective leadership. 
it's all about relationships when we talk about human beings you know sometimes you follow a leader despite of the fact that they don't have the possession but because you have the relationship with them you're willing to go the extra mile to do their bidding and that has some that is all about permission which is the second level of leadership john maxwell uh, said people do not care how much you know until they know how much you care you can you know know a lot of things and like you know people will hear you speak and they will say like okay yeah you know that okay you're intelligent they can admit to the fact that you're intelligent and you're fit for your position but they will not care of what level of intelligence you have unless they know that you actually care for them first so caring you know precedes um whatever advice we can give right to our to our subordinates to uh to our colleagues so you have to show them that you care first and that's the reason why um they will follow you the third level is known as production. People follow you because of what you have done for the organization or let's say for the project in general. So production, this is level three. This is people get this is the level where people get things done. And they help the members of their team get things done. So it's not just you being able to do what is necessary, but you're also able to help them you know, produce what is necessary for the whole team, okay, to get the results that you need. Remember on the first level, we said that uh, it's all about possession. So you got in, your foot on the door, and then you leveled up by, by cultivating your relationships. Now, here in production, you're not just after relationships, you're after results. If you can add results to the relationships that you've previously established and develop a team of people who like each other and get things done you have created a powerful combination and um for a leader it's very important that you are able to produce the results that are necessary it's the, one of the things that uh you know that is a gauge if you are effective as a leader is the results that you're you're giving to the company let me give you an example. It's about Mr. Goosh. So the story is that um, Mr. Goosh is a, he's a sales representative, but he is a sales representative of a certain company, but he is not very good with grammar or English, but he's very good with what he does, and that is selling stuff. Okay, so he's a sales representative. So it says here, this is a, a letter from him to uh, the company. Okay, so it says here, I seen this outfit which they ain't never bought a deem's worth of nothing from us. And I sold them some goods. I'm now going to Chicago. Gush. This is the report. So the there. His supervisor, uh, so he was hired, and then he was able to sell a certain brand, uh, the the clothes that were uh, not being sold by their company. So they have this style of clothes; it was not being sold. He saw it, and he told his uh, supervisor that he's gonna sell it. So what he did was he took the, those clothes and sold them, and he got about like millions sold. So his um, his supervisor asked him, Gush, can you give us a report of, you know, a sales report? And this is his sales re report. I seen this outfit, which they ain't never. So it's like, it's an email. And this is what he sent. I'm not, I'm now going to Chicago to actually do uh, what he did in the pre previous uh, state. So here, this is a, a next, um, from Chicago, Gush uh, once again um, gave his uh, his report to his supervisor. I come here and sold them half a million. So he sold again that brand, that style, which is no longer being sold. He sold it again in Chicago. What he did on the other state, okay? So. Um, because of this, 
the president of the company saw what Gush was able to do. And he was, he was, you know, he was amazed at his ability to sell these clothes. And now, and yet the, the supervisor reported him that his sales are good. And yet he cannot, you know, come up with a report that is the standard for sales representatives. So the president did what uh, was unexpected. He replied and made a banner. This is like a huge banner that was displayed on the company's uh, building, on the side of the company's building. And it says here, we've been spending too much time trying to spell instead of trying to sell. Let's watch those sales. I want everybody should read these letters from Goosh, who is on the road doing a great job for us, and you should go out and do like he done, President. Now, the thing about this is the results. Goosh was able to go up the ladder because he was a sales representative, and he was able to say to 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 increase the sales of the company. And I guess that's what the president is trying to say that you know, um, all of you you've had your degrees, but you're not able to produce the results that we need. And here comes this Mr. Goosh, who is not uh, you know as educated probably as you are, but is able to make the sales. Uh, that the company needs. So he was being recognized. He was recognized by the president. Okay? So if you're producing results, your results speak loudly to those we work for and to those we lead. As I've told you, in the art of teaching, you have to earn the right to be heard as a teacher. Same thing with this. If you were placed on that leadership position, you have to earn the right to be there. You have to be competent enough for people to see that and tell themselves that she really deserves that position. Although she's young, although it doesn't matter, although she's, you know, she has less academic achievement as I have, but the fact that she's able to produce undeniable results, this is the thing about results, they speak so loud, okay? You cannot, you know, and when your results are speaking loud enough, do not interrupt. Do not, you know, do not tell them your accomplishments anymore if they know already your results, you know? So, Results speak loud, so make sure that you're able to develop your competence in the field that you're leading, okay? So that those are your, uh, that's the third level, which is your production. The fourth level is people development. So remember, I, I've told you that the relationship is on the, third, uh, on the second level. Now, on the fourth level comes your people development. People follow you because of what you have done for them. The third uh, the third level says, because of what you've done for the organization, now it's about developing the people under you to be as effective as you are. Some leaders are so focused on their own productivity that they don't realize they should be developing people. Now, this mentor-mentee relationship will go beyond the bounds of your organization or even the bounds of the uh, teacher teacher learner experience if you are a leader a great leader and you're able to develop people so how do you develop people i remember this book that i've read also from john maxwell he talked about this elevator principle he said that we are like elevators we can either take people up or take people down so as a person who has uh, developed leadership skills you have to be able to actually teach others how to develop them as well. You should not be um, stingy about the skills that you have developed along the way. And you should be able to mentor others to be like you or even, you know, better than you. And that is the, that's where people development comes in. Success without a successor is ultimately a failure. You need to have a legacy where people 
uh, where even if you leave that company, there are people who can do the things that you have done previously because you're able to develop them. Now, one of the things that uh, we do is to take people under our wing. So you have your protege and um, you have people that you mentor. So if you are in this level of leadership right now, you're mentoring people, then let me remind you that you are reproducing yourself. So you have to be careful also not to reproduce the bad habits that you have because they are looking up to you and they will copy what you do. So this is all about people development. Leaders become great not because of their power, but because of their ability to empower others. This is from John Maxwell. Leaders become great not because of their power, but because of their ability to empower others. Can you imagine if you develop a person, teach that person something that, you know, you, for example, pass on your passion. If you're able to do that to that person, then you empower that person to be able to achieve more than you could have. And that is true development, true succession. And of course, one of the benefits also of having a successor is that you can leave that position, you know? So for example, if there is no successor, it's possible that your boss will not, you know, promote you because you've not trained anyone to replace you. So because you do great work and they and they will not promote you just because no one else can do what you do. But if you train somebody else to do what you do, then probably they can promote you and you go up the ladder, uh, one step up the ladder. When we talk about people development, these are the questions that you can ask yourself if you are ready for this level. The first question is, am I passionate about my personal growth? Do you, do you try to grow every single day? That's why we call ourselves everyday learner for that reason. We want to grow every day. We want to add something. We are passionate to adding, adding something on our repertoire every time that we could. And we want to develop areas of ourselves. Are you passionate about that? If you are, then that's one step closer to you being able to develop others. Next, does your growth journey have credibility? How did you grow? Did you start from scratch? How was the process? Are there bitter process along the way? If you can share your growth journey to other people and they can also gain something from it, it's credible, then you are able, to, you can train others to succeed you. Are people attracted to me because of my growth? Are people drawn to you because of your passion for learning? Are they drawn to you because of your passion for teaching, for mentoring? Then you are ready. So if your answer is yes. Am I successful in the areas where I want to develop others? Of course, <laughs> you have to be. When you are not successful at, at something and you want others, you know, you want others to follow you on that path, then you were you are all diving on a cliff. You have to make sure that you are first successful. You know, you, you like you've been there so that you can get people there. So it's very difficult to guide people and you yourself haven't been there yet. So you have to be uh, successful on the field that you want to mentor others. Do I have a teachable way of life? Look at yourself. Do you have that idea that because I received this award or because I have achieved this level of knowledge, then I will not learn anymore? Obviously, most of our subscribers here in Everyday Learner are here just because of this. You are teachable. If you're here and you're already a leader, then it tells me that you are somebody who just wants to gain more and more knowledge, learn a lot, absorb everything that they could because you're still here despite of the fact that you are already a leader. Number six question, am I willing to be a vulnerable role model? One of my experiences as a counselor and a speaker, a motivational speaker, is that once you learn how to be vulnerable yourself, other people, it's easier for other people to be vulnerable as well. They don't want to follow someone they cannot relate to. For example, you are, you know, you are the leader and you're high and mighty and they cannot seem to reach you because you don't make mistakes, then you know, 
it's very difficult for them to actually see themselves in your journey. But if you're able to be vulnerable, if you are willing to show them your weakness, they can learn a lot from it. That's the reason why we are not perfect. Because in our weakness, people can relate a lot. In our brokenness, people can see themselves. And if you're willing to be that kind of role model, not to be the giant, for example, in the faith, or not to be the, you know, the the unreachable goal, then people will, you know, will will relate to you and they will see themselves in your journey. Seventh, do the do the people I develop succeed? Another question for you if you're here in this level and if you want to be in this level is what what about your track record have you developed others who have who were able to achieve success as you also have then that is your resume it means that that's an accomplishment on your belt that you're able to develop these people already and others are looking at them and seeing the success that they have so they will they would really line up for you to develop them some people are uh, really asking questions that um what well, i want to mentor others but no one wants to be mentored by me then this you can try with somebody in your influence already and you know try to mentor them and then they will see that oh that person is is uh mom cherry's mentee or mom cherry's disciple then they will see you your values in them and they will see your, their potential and also give them the opportunities that they have already given you. I personally am able to mentor some young people. And I am so blessed to have them in my life. And um, they usually call me Mommy Che because, uh, because of the mentor-mentee relationship that we have. And um, these young people, I'm so, so proud of them. They are learners they are you know uh, excellent in whatever they do uh they they try to give their best and they receive high honors and when they are associated with me because um they are excellent you know it it gives you some form of what do you call this it's a it's pride not not pride in the wrong uh, in the negative sense it's it's like a, a parent's pride. Like, you know, you're so proud of them. You're so proud of what they've done. You're so proud of what they have accomplished. And it boils down to your relationship with them, to the mentor-mentor relationship. And as a motivational speaker, I have, I was able to uh, to mentor some of them. And I'm so blessed and happy that they are also now able to speak in their schools, able to take on leadership roles. And um, I'm not saying that it's all because of me, but I'm saying that we had that journey together. And that journey cannot be replaced by money. It cannot, it's just an amazing journey. And you can also have that when you're able to develop people around you. The fifth level is known as the pinnacle. This is people follow you because of who you are and what you represent, what you stand for. The final level of leadership is based on reputation. Just hearing your name, they already know who you are and what you stand for, your brand. People at this level are known not only outside their organization, but outside their fields, their countries, and even their lifetimes. As I've told you about the influencers, you know, some of them are already dead. The the exercise that we did earlier. Some of them are already dead and yet people still follow their teachings. Because because of the fact uh, because of the brand, because of what they stand for, because of who they are. They're able to establish their integrity, their reputation, that people follow them even after they're dead. So that is the highest form of leadership. These are examples of people who reach that pinnacle. You have Martin Luther King Jr., Nelson Mandela, Leonardo da Vinci, Aristotle, Jose Rizal even, you know. So these are... These are people who have reached the highest level of leadership that even after they're gone, they are able to influence change 
and that change lasted no in our lifetime so the th several thoughts on these five levels of leadership first it can be applied to every area of your life both personal and professional um in, in your personal life, you are leading people. You, if you are the eldest among siblings, your, your younger siblings are looking up to you. Maybe they don't say it out loud, but they are. And my younger siblings, I know they're looking up to me. My younger sister, um, she's two years younger than me, but I know she looks up to me. She asks my opinions on life-changing life decisions that she has, that she, she encounters, and she values my opinion. My brother, my youngest brother. So in our family, so um, my younger sister is a principal, and my younger brother is an engineer. And despite of the careers that they already have, they often come to me and say, Ate Che, what, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think about this? What, they constantly ask me for my opinion. And to me, that that means a lot because I know that in my personal life, my siblings look up to me. And if you have siblings of your own, it's really good to have a voice, right? To know that they are looking up to you and that your opinions matter to them. And if you are able to cultivate that relationship, then you will, you know, you will see that that uh, they are actually taking your advice. They are, you know, putting you you in high regards when uh, when you know your influence when they choose their career, even when they uh, choose their lifetime mates. So I think this is very very important for you as parents. Can you imagine? If your children will like ask you like mom I want to be like or say to you mom I want to be just like you you know this puts leadership in a new perspective so it can happen in your personal life and it can also happen in your professional life of course that is mostly where we thought, where this leadership is aimed at so even if you're not in a uh leadership position per se as long as it's a position in a company it is a leadership position another thought is that you are on a different level with each individual person in your life so for example you have a friend and it, that friend is just an acquaintance so you have a position the level one uh, the entry level of leadership in in his or her life however if you have let's say just like what i've given given you let, let's say if you have a mentee or someone who looks up to you, then probably uh, that person you're trying to develop. So you have level four leadership on that person. So every person in your life, you have different levels of leadership with them. And you can hone that, 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 that level of leadership up to it reaches its pinnacle. If you skip a level to try to speed up the process, you will have to circle back and earn that level anyway for the longevity of the relationship. Let's say, for example, uh, like me, most of the time, uh, I usually go for the third level, which is your production. I want to show people what I can do first, even before I get the position or even before uh, I get I, I have the relationships with the people. So I I first start with trying to show them what I can do and I have to circle back to the position because even if people know what you can do and you don't have the position for it, you cannot, you know, ask them to follow you. Let's say, for example, you know, you come into, let's say, uh, an institution. For example, let me just give an example. Let's say DOH. So, for example, I enter DOH and I told them, I can do this. I can do that. And they will tell me, who are you? So they will not even recognize you without that position, right? So you have to circle back. So you can show people what you can do, of course. And once they give you that position, so you have to go back to that and then develop people, or rather develop relationships, and then develop other people to become leaders as well. So you can skip a level, but you have to go back and go through each level. 
Each time you change jobs or join a new circle of people, you start on the lowest level and have to work your way up again. That is true, really. So, for example, you have a lot of, let's say, uh, switching jobs. So it's that's why it's very uncomfortable for anyone to lose a job and you know switch to another even if it's for a higher pay because of the fact that changing jobs puts you again on the lowest or on the bottom of the totem pole so you have to once again you know make your way up by showing what you can do building relationships so you have to you know uh every time you start a new then you know you have to start from the bottom once a level is earned, it must be maintained, which means that you can lose some of the relationships. For example, you're already on level three, you're showing re results, and yet you somehow, you know, forgot your personal relationships with people. Then it's possible that, you know, there's falling, falling apart. And when that happens, you have to really, uh, before even that happens, you have to maintain the relationship with these people. Okay, for you to be able to maintain the influence. Just as you can add influence at a level, you can also lose influence at a level. That's what I'm trying to say. So if you do not maintain your relationships, you do not maintain, uh, especially now, time is of the essence. You're not seeing each other uh, as often as you need to. So it's important for you to continue that relationship, to maintain that level of relationship, even with, uh, with Zoom. I remember I have this... Uh, close friends uh, as i entered the university of perpetual help uh, last semester i have with me uh, two other colleagues who started the same as i did and we had this uh you know instant connection so we had this friendship we had this group chat and i saw myself even after our contracts ended last may we continued on with our relationship just you know just uh, updating each other talking in uh chats and even you know looking uh for what uh, at what each other is uh doing we also had coffee together by video chat so before before the lockdown we do we go to starbucks you know we eat lunch out but because of the pandemic, so we cannot do that anymore. That's the reason why what we do is we have coffee, but it's only by ourselves on our, in our homes, but through video chat. So in that way, we can maintain our influence with each other, our relationship with each other, because we took that effort, that extra effort. You know, any relationship that you want to cultivate will require you, you some extra efforts. So. Because of that, you know, we are able to maintain our level of influence with each other. It takes less time to lose a level than it does to earn it. That is actually true. Um, have If you look at your past relationships or even your past uh, leadership roles, if you just, let's say, for example, you know, committed a mistake, sometimes all the results that you have placed into that, you know, into that organization seem to have been forgotten just because of the one mistake that you did. And that's why it's easy to lose influence than to gain it or earn it. So it, it, it took you, let's say, years to build your reputation. It will take one mistake to ruin that reputation. So you have to be very, very careful, especially when it comes to your integrity. Let me read to you a short poem about influence. So it's entitled, My Influence. My life shall touch a dozen lives before this day is done. Leave countless marks for good or ill, earth sets the evening sun. This is the wish I always wish, the prayer I always pray. Lord, may my life help other lives it touches by the way. So if it's your goal that your life touch other people's lives, then you have to build on your influence. And you have to make sure that that influence is something that will build others up and not tear them down. So I hope that you learned something out of this session where it reaches her first lesson. The next lesson will be shown shortly after this one. And I hope that you are still with us on that next session. Okay, see you then.